It's the penultimate week of the Meiji Yasuda J1 League and the title race is down to just two teams. Will the Mariners be crowned champions or will Frontale leapfrog them and take this one into the final week? Let's get down to it right here on the J1 League Goal Zone. Kawasaki cut Yokohama's lead to just two points after a round of rescheduled fixtures from match week 25. Frontale beat Kyoto 3-1, while the Marinos came up short as the league leaders fell to a 1-0 home loss to bottom side Jubilo. Cerezo slipping away from AFC qualification with that loss to Tokyo, Kobe with another win to further help their cause towards top flight survival. Match week 33 fixtures then, relegation trouble Chimizu at home against Kashima and two other sides fighting for survival, Gamba and Jubilo go head to head. Vissel headed to Kawasaki for their match and the Marinos were taking on Uro. Shimizu came into this fixture in poor form and sat at the bottom end of the table in relegation playoff position. Winless in their last five, they'd be hoping to find better luck against the Adlers who had little left to play for. It was Shimizu who had the first chance of the game. From the corner, Thiago Santi meeting the ball very cleanly, but straight into the arms of Tomoki Hayakawa. An equally strong header from Kashima's Yuma Suzuki on 29 minutes after a delightful cross from Keigo Sumimoto. Shuichi Gonda diving away to his right to keep that one out. Nil-nil at half-time, but it was a very strange goal that broke the deadlock in the second half. Kento Misao has his initial shot blocked, but then the defensive clearance cannons off the sole of his boot and into the net for a 1-0 lead. And they came so close to getting a second with 10 minutes to go. Suzuki glances the corner towards goal, a reflex save from Gonda, up onto the crossbar and away with the follow-up shot from the visitors blazed over the bar, but they come away with all three points. Nagoya had not won in their last five and were up against the Tokyo side that came into this one on the back of three wins from their last four and will be looking to finish their season with a flourish. After a third minute free kick gets knocked down at the back post, Kensuke Nagai drives the ball towards goal Jakob Slowik makes a reflex save and the power of that drive knocks him off his feet in the process. Another free kick to Nagoya seven minutes later, this time met with the firm forehead of Noriyoshi Sakai. Slowik this time unable to keep it out. Early in the second half, Tokyo come forward looking for that equaliser. And when the ball falls to Yasuki Kimoto, with very little daylight for him to aim at, what a strike that is, finding the top corner with one of the goals of the week. Now looking to take the lead in the 66th minute, Tokyo burst forward through Kuryu Matsuki, a suspicion of handball there. But in any event, Langerak got his body behind the shot. And his teammates would be very grateful because just three minutes later, Nagoya got the winner. A quickly taken free kick found Tokyo napping. Ryoya Morishita squares the ball, and although the goalkeeper gets a palm to it, Nagai is perfectly placed to claim all three points. Two sides in the automatic relegation spots, Jubilo need a win for any chance of survival, but Gamba would be looking to make the most of home advantage to take the win and relegate their rivals. Perhaps befitting two teams who've struggled so much this season, the first goal-scoring chance didn't happen until four minutes before the break. And when it did from six yards out, Kosuke Onose lifted it over the bar with the goal gaping. What Gamba could do badly, Jubilo apparently could do equally badly. Yuto Suzuki picking out Yasuhiko Endo. But to be fair to him, the ball did take a horrible bobble on its way through. But there would be goals in this game. Gamba finding themselves in plenty of space. Ryotaro Mishino, given lots of time to set this one up on his left foot, and he picks out the bottom corner. After that inadequate finishing earlier on in the game, Patrick turned the standard up a notch or two with an overhead kick to make it 2-0 
with 70 minutes still to play. It was now up to Jubilo to throw everything they could at the opposition's goalkeeper. But there was no getting past Masaki Higashiguchi on this day. San Frecce came into this one on the back of a cup win and needed three points to confirm third spot and AFC qualification. Consadole were in the bottom half of the table and shouldn't present too much trouble for the home team. Andy Bodfish has your commentary. Xavier. Well played. Because Fernandez is the target. First touch was good. Tries to weave himself into a position where he can have a shooting opportunity. The ball just skidded loose. And Osako has to make the save. And a slot through for Karoki. He's got there. He's round the goalkeeper. He scored. Really well taken that by Shinzo Karoki. It was a delightful through ball here that catches Sanfrecce too far up the pitch and Karoki does the rest. That is a really smooth piece of finishing. Kashiwa. Go square. Shiatani trying to feed it through. Shiatani, that's useful. That's in the back of the net off Gonsuda. For the first time, Sapporo properly breached. 1-1. Kuto Notsuda he scores his first J1 goal since June. Another ball in. Decent that to Gabriel Xavier. He's rolled it across and it's turned in by Hiroki Miyazawa. Well, that looked far too easy. It was a, a nicely constructed goal, but what on earth? is happening there in the San Frecce Hiroshima defence. They just switched off, but credit the build-up play here. That's the final whistle, a first ever J1 win away to San Frecce Hiroshima for Consadoli Sapporo means it goes down to the very last match here for the Viola. And they have to beat Sagantosu away next week to lock up third place in J1. An excellent away win for Sapporo here at the Edeon. It's time for a break now. When we return, we'll check in on the title contenders. Could the Mariners wrap up the crown with two games to go? Stay with us. Just one more week left in the season and it's still all to play for. Can the AFC Champions League spots or the title be decided in this penultimate round? Let's see how the rest of Match Week 33 played out. Avispa very much in the danger zone and with two games to go, they'd be looking for more points to secure safety in J1. Kashiwa had drifted into mid-table, having no wins in eight. It could all work out well for the hosts. Avispa then needed a good start and they got one. Takaki Shichi breaking down the left hand side and when it arrived into the path of Yuya Yamagishi, he smashed it home on the half volley. 1 0 up in the fourth minute, here they are looking for another just seconds before the break. Masato Yuzawa with an inch perfect cross, picking out Juan Mar Delgado, who gives the goalkeeper no chance. But Kashiwa found some spirit early in the second half. Mateus Savio holding the ball up well on the edge of the box, leg it off for Sachiro Toshima, who offers his thanks with a thunderous drive. Would they now find an equaliser just minutes before the final whistle? Tomoya Koyamatsu setting up an opportunity for Hidetake Mai, but he couldn't get enough of his header and the points go to Avispa. Kawasaki had kept the pressure on the Marinos and were now just two points behind with a huge chance to retain their title. Only a win would keep them in the hunt 
and they'd have to pull out all the stops against the Kobe side that came into this one with five consecutive wins. Here's Shazadha. A bit more patient this rather than the frenetic pace we saw inside the first 10-15 minutes. Marcinho, can he finish off? What a great individual goal. And that's beautifully done by the Brazilian. Have a look at how he did this. The defender was soft, isn't it? All him. That's great perseverance from the Brazilian. So let's just go back there. Kobayashi given away. Can they finish this off? There's back up here. Oh, the keeper has done well. It's cleared off the line. Yu Kobayashi went too wide. Oh, it's a decent free kick. And they've equalised here. That is a great goal from Yuki Kobayashi. No chance for Jung Sung Ryong. That is a superb free kick. It's the woodwork and beat the goalkeeper. Better from Kawasaki. Kawasaki. Oh, to take the shot, perhaps Kobayashi. Marcinho, what a save. Suboy, perhaps now also playing a part to redeem himself. Taking a deflection, Savoy reacts well. Oh, he seemed to pull out of it. Maybe he knew what was going to happen next. Is that going to go to VAR now? Oh, the flag had gone up. Maybe that's why. But oh, that's that came off the shoulder. But that's not the reason why he. He barely did anything. I think he was uh, very confident. That's not something I would uh, think that most keepers would want to do. Yukobayashi, it's a foul just outside the area. Doesn't matter where the ball is, it's about the leg where it's placed. The leg that's fouled. That left leg of Yukobayashi. It's clearly inside the area. Now, if that's been played in the crowd, the crowd's cheering, which means they're probably getting an output of this as well. Now, let's see the reaction. Big roar in the Todoroki. Which way is he going to go? Remember, this is a keeper who has never played any professional football till today. He got a hand to it, but it wasn't enough. He collapses to the ground. Kobayashi the foul he got something on it he guessed the right way but it was too high and that height as well is always difficult oh the referee has called time and that penalty towards the end of play by this man here Akihiro Iyanaga means they will take this to the final day and ends here at the Tony Rocky Stadium Kawasaki Fontale 2 one. The Marinos had had control of the league for months and now came into the last two games with their lead over Frontale almost disappearing. They'd need to take care of business when Urawa came to town and set up an exciting final day of the season. Mark Richmond has your comment. Mitsunuma has found a lot of room down this right hand side. Still Mitsunuma trying to squeeze the shot right through and it's gone all the way through to Elbert, it's onside and Yokohama Marinos have finally scored. It's fortuitous but it's the kind of luck that they needed and that has deserted them as their fans would think over the last couple of games. Elbert on his 75th Yokohama Marinos appearance scores his sixth of the season. Took up a deep position before sneaking right at the very end to find space to slot it into an open net. Opportunity for the breakaway right now. Carsten Junker has found some space behind the back line. Still Junker just slightly behind Isaka. Well, they made a mess out of it. Uh, and that chance is probably gone now. 
Juncker. Oh, I tell you what, it wasn't far away, was it from Ito? Scored his first ever J League goal in this fixture last year. For Yokohama Morinos, Elbert took them on a run, skipped inside. Wonderful save by Nishikawa, but all he could do was to palm it out. Hand wasn't strong enough, and Anderson Lopez, as he's done throughout his career, lurking in that six yard box. Osaka, second time already, he's lost out to Watanabe. Elbert, that's too easy. Way too easy. Surely now three points for Yokohama Marinos. Oh, that defense was just carved open. And they stood and watched as Elbert waltzed into the box and planted it beyond the reach of Nishikawa. Gone past everyone, that's a super save by Nishikawa. Nishikawa saw it very late but reacted superbly, he couldn't go for that. And Anderson Lopez has put it into the back of the net. They have a fourth against Urawa. Handball. The referee says accidental play on Okubo slightly behind for Junker. That's the Junker we all know. One chance, and he slipped it through the legs of Takaoka. And Urawa have got a goal. This is going to be a consolation against this Yokohama backline. A conversation between the Kawasaki and Vissel coaches to say help us with one over Yokohama Marinos, but on form, on current form, and especially with the display of Kevin Musket's man today, it's going to take some stopping for them to win the league title. And Yokohama Marinos can see the light, can they complete the title chase? Yeah, it's uh, it, it, sometimes it happens, uh, and I, you know, I spoke, about, you know, post the last two games after the, you know, the performance, the performances were strong. Uh, we didn't take our chances, uh, and it and it wasn't the story of the season, you know, because we've scored many goals this season, and tonight we showed again that uh, uh, we're a powerful team going forward. Yeah, it's exciting. Looking forward to it, and. Uh, as coaches, as players, these are the games tonight uh, and, and, and next week. These are the games you, uh, you you want, you work to be involved in. So we will prepare well uh, and we will go to Corbe and we will continue uh, trying to do the same things that we've done all season. Shonan had won just one of their last six and were hovering in the bottom half of the table as they came into this contest against Saga. The visitors were on back-to-back -back losses and Shonan would be hoping to keep that streak going. And they certainly seemed to do that in the early going. With five green shirts ploughing forward, Hirokazu Ishihara's cross from the right-hand side finds Shuto Machino, who heads home superbly for the opening goal of the game. Then, with only 20 minutes on the clock, Sagan got themselves into defensive problems. Pedestrian on the ball, they allowed Tarek to win possession. He supplies Machino and he gets his second. Deftly picking his spot beyond the goalkeeper's outstretched arms. Two minutes into first half stoppage time, Yuji Ono tries one from the free kick, probably going wide before Kosei Tani palmed it away. But just after the restart, Daiki Sugioka 
just taps the ankle of Jun Nishikawa and the referee awards a penalty. Nishikawa takes it himself, a comfortable height for goalkeeper Tani, who chose the right way and gained the plaudits of his teammates. And Shonan's celebrations continued in the 78th minute. From the corner, Shuto Yamamoto rises high. And although the goalkeeper got both hands on that, he couldn't keep it out. 3-0. Not much that Sagan could do about the result here in the 94th minute. But that didn't stop Fuchi Honda looking for some consolation, which he didn't get. Shonan take all three points. Following promotion last season, Kyoto now find themselves in danger of going back to J2 football. Faced with an opponent gunning for the top three and AFC qualification, Cerezo would prove to be a tough nut to crack for the home team. Here's Rich Russian Ryan. Satoki Uejo steps up to take this. Attempted to just go for goal. He's going to do exactly that. Forces a punch from Kami Fukumoto. Up here, that's Toyokawa. Shrugs off this challenge, drives into the area, He's looking for the cutback. It's kept alive by Ogiwara, clipped into the box. Toyokawa with the effort. Back out to Matsuda. Oh, it's taken a deflection of Nishio. Passes with Fukuoka. Takeda, lovely play by Kyoto. One and two touch football. Ogiwara with the shot off the post. Beautiful build-up by the home side as they shifted the ball from right to left in possession. Zuejo can't take that down under control. Okuno with the shot. Stings the palms of Kami Fukumoto. That is Cerezo Osaka's best opportunity in this match. Kitano. Jean Patrick. Again, it's his directness and his pace. It causes all sorts of issues into Maikuma. Huge save from Kami Fukumoto. Ball still alive. Matsuda's effort eventually blocked by Rikito Inui. Looks to have taken one to the face. Whipped in. It's a head at the near post. Comes back off the crossbar. Pushed on to the frame of the goal by Kami Fukumoto. It's a clever ball, really good ball out to Nakahara. Cuts inside on his left foot, Nakahara! Forcing another save from Kami Fukumoto, and it's another spectacular save. Not long to go now in this one. It's a time for one final opportunity, might fall for Kyoto Sanga. Paulinho cuts inside, picks out Araki! Oh, he's blazed over the bar! Some last-ditch defending by Cerezo Osaka has denied Araki. That could very well be the final action of this match. Indeed, it is. They've huffed and they've puffed, but they haven't been able to find a way through Kyoto Sanga. It's been a thrilling end to this game as both sides chase the winner. It ends here at the Sanga Stadium by Kyocera. Kyoto Sanga nil. Cerezo Osaka nil. Here then are all of your results. Kashima beating Shimizu 1-0. Gamba with a big 2-0 win against Jubilo and Consadole taking a victory in Hiroshima. Kawasaki keeping their title ambitions on with a 2-1 win against Vissel and the Marinos followed suit winning 4-1 over Uruguay. Yokohama maintained their two-point lead at the top then, with Kawasaki keeping the pressure on in second. Sanfrecce in third on 54, and also need to wait to the final day to clinch third automatically and that crucial Champions League spot. Cerezo and Kashima tied on 51, with a distant shout to challenge Hiroshima next weekend. Consadole, Sagan and Vissel assured of another season in the top flight. Avispa move away from the playoff spot but are not out of trouble yet. Shimizu drop to 17th and are in danger with 33 points. With Jubilo the first to be relegated, five teams will be fighting it out on the final day to keep their spot in the top division for next season.
And so with the final week of the season coming up, there is everything still to play for. The title and the relegation spots all on the line. We are set for a thrilling final day. I'm Steve Dawson and we'll see you next time for the final time this season on the J1 League Goal Zone.